So once the credits are done rolling, we're going to see a uh, montage of um, photos from Moo's collection. Do you want yeah. to talk about those real quick? Yeah, uh, actually the whole thing is, you, uh, I was saying in the beginning, it's based on true events, which is based on my family history, where I grew up seeing my brothers, uh, how can I say, tension in their teenage years. Uh, this whole story is based on uh, my brother and my father's conflict and also me growing up in Istanbul in a conservative environment. I had been through the same conflicts, you know, where I always tried to explain myself in any situation possible because it was always like a, uh, like a fight going on. My brother, uh, my father was a musician, uh, but his, his career was ended up with a coup. Uh, he was very famous in the 80s, he was like going, going to become a famous singer, but then the coup happened and he was forced to join the army. Uh, and then when he turned back, he found out that his career was being, uh, is, is gone because everybody's forgetting him. And then my brother born, and, and basically the DNA is coming from my father, and he was into the music, but his music style was completely different, where he was into the punk music, which is a quite extreme for a conservative country like Istanbul. And especially Turkey, and these are some of the footages you are going to see through the night. Like through the night, I'm going to show you like the feeling of, of what was it to be a punk in the 90s Istanbul. This is like one of the concerts. That's my brother. It's on drum set, uh, and 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 basically the the, the the reason why I wanted to do this movie is that like I was always being uh, treated as like a dreamer in my country. Uh, when I was growing up, I also listened to punk music, uh, and it was for me very early age. I I, I met I, I meet this style of extreme music, where this expressionist style was driving me so much that like it becomes my core value afterwards. However, when I was going out in the society, the whole thing was is almost uh, the, the the opposite. It was more about not showing your feelings, it's more about not killing your ideas. And, 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 and what was the strange thing is that like your your ideas are being constantly killed by most of the time from the people that normally they should be understanding you. That's the strange part. Like it's the so-called liberals or, or some people like they come to you that, that, and, and say to you that like, oh, you know what? Keep that idea to yourself. It's too much for Turkey. Or, or like you're in any, in any, any way, like you're in any place when you come up with something original or something different, it it can be a reason for most of the people to be against you. And and that was what was killing me so much that like when I when I wasn't understanding. I I was always thinking that like there was something wrong with me, and that's why I was grow up uh, just hiding my feelings most of the time. And try to hide that. But when I try to, when I get, I start to live in abroad, I start to live in London, Paris, and I start to do business in outside of my country. Where I understand that, like, it's all about your values are 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 are, are making what you are. Like, your values are your core, and and, and what you believe in, and, and what kind of things that the way you put it out there is makes. It, it sets your value in the market, basically. It's all about like your ideas and your attitude, it makes sense. But it was completely the opposite. And then, so I returned back and I was like doing a lot of stuff and then I just wanted to make this film in order to give a hope uh, to most of the youth, especially in Istanbul and Turkey, and also having this uh, depressed feeling uh, like uh, for the kids that who has these kind of depressed feelings, and especially the older generation, and especially in these kind of conservative environments, they supposed to be help the younger generation. They are actually the worst ones. Like those, the, the, the older liberal generation is is the ones who are always killing your ideas. Is, is the ones always making you to have a self control about your ideas and, and everything. So it was for me to show the punk. Uh, in a sense that like the self-expressionist style is so important, and especially at this age, where everyone is choosing a side, and the polarization is, is, is affecting everyone in such a fast pace that like right now it's, it's so easy to, to choose a side, you know? It's so easy to be a fascist or racist. It's so easy. Uh, you can be in one second 
uh, you know, uh, choose an opposite direction. But it's so hard to build up an empathy towards someone that doesn't share any kind of values with you. It's so hard because it, it, it makes you to create an, a specific style of attention towards the, the other. So that's why punk is, is an other too. It's rather than a race. Like having a, a little simple uh, music choice can make you become an other in, in an Eastern country. And I want to portray that feeling in order to make people, maybe they will inspire from a larger view. And you know, some of the time, like from that micro, simple, very micro DNA concept, and maybe they will inspire from a different perspective. So this whole thing was based on about these true feelings that I have been going through. And yeah, I, I, we can talk about them, and we can make it more interactive. And I just want to point out these two things. And hey, maybe you can, you remember the footage that I was telling you, uh, showing you. Uh, that was, will be an interesting experience for the people. For example, I'm going to show a, a footage from 1991, which is a grindcore band called Dead Room. <laughs> and it's, it's not even punk, this is grindcore. Like, <laughs> this is like... Uh, Almost like uh, seeing Judgment Day, like you know, like <laughs> I mean, you know, this album, 1991, and there were no even like this is real, like what you see is real. Uh, this is an amazing band. They are like, I think this footage is, is the we can a little bit go further on, uh, maybe like uh, this footage is, is, is the maybe um, someone in the academic uh, field should study that. But this, I believe, these are the first organized punk movement in any Muslim country in the world. Like, they are like a bunch of a hundred kids into, a little bit, let's say they, they, are, they, they come from metal field, because metal was famous in the late 80s, especially in Turkey too, in the world. But this style of music is so extreme, if you can hear also in the background, Daytime show, huh? please. Like, I mean, there's no, don't think that there are some drugs involved or, or alcohol. It's just like, you know, uh, there's nothing going on. It just, they just want to express themselves. This is insane for me, you know, like to, to know this, the fact that this is exist, existed. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, if there's a question we can, uh, I can like answer, you know, like we can go on, like, and, and maybe Eric, we can uh, show some pictures to, uh, if we can go to the picture folder. Uh, some really interesting pictures that show the cultural side of, of being punk in Istanbul. Uh, I, I'm putting out all these things, this is an amazing example, for example. This is one of the, my friend, Bikam, she's actually, I believe, one of the first ones, uh, this is me. And that's my brother. It's like a normal rural, like a, like a family side of Turkey. And my brother is wearing a crater t-shirt, which is like a, <laughs> a trash metal. Like this. this is insane. I'm three years old doing devil horn. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my family so far. And that's my mother. She doesn't even understand anything. And my brother is wearing a t-shirt, Gruder, which is like a German uh, speed trash metal band. Like these are insane. Like I always say that like. I, I'm a system error. This is a mini picture. That that thing is, is, is like in between. There's an empty space because they were afraid from my brother. <laughs> yeah. uh, this, is, this is a picture in the family side. Like, you know, he's like wearing Iron Maiden. He just freaked, like very recently find out the Iron Maiden thing. But they were afraid from him. <laughs> <laughs> Family apartment uh, where you see an energy sign in the back, and this drum set he bought it uh, without my father's permission. He, he went there and said to the drummer, uh, guy, Yeah, this is basically they were throwing this garage punk, but all the other people in there they don't know what punk is, they don't even they, nobody knows what punk it is. It's all about just playing something, and sometimes that, that's very important. It's not this is not like a punk concert for them. This is for that, just playing something, you know? It's as simple as it is. This is Merta, where I came from. This is a district in Istanbul. It represents that slum in the background. 
this also represents a cultural clash in my country, where we were, like my family come from the eastern side of uh, Turkey, and they all settled in Istanbul, and it was a dream. You know, it's like the American dream is the Istanbul dream in Turkey. So they all went there, but the, the, in the background you see the slum, those are the poor people, but we were middle class, but we were in the same district. And that's very interesting. And this is where America is, and that's where the first punk concerts take place. And this is me, my brother, with Gruder t-shirt, uh, uh, very crazy punk band, like, you know, and just like being himself, you know? Basically. This is an amazing, hilarious picture. He is doing Devil Horn, but like the eyes closed, and like I made a t-shirt. And that <laughs> you know, aesthetic is. And this picture is a classic for me because it shows the like this is really important. Like wearing a sneaker and jeans was a statement. You can feel that because you see the guys in the background, this is what people were used to wear at that time. So this guy was like a back to the future. Guy, you know, you know, like a smart Mac fly just landing to matter and, and like and just looking up to people, you know, like it's that kind of like really uh, like being an alien uh, is basic. And this show, you see that little kid how she wears? Like just a little kid is he's even younger than him. But look at what how, how he is wearing. And look at him, he has an Exodus t-shirt by the way. That's Exodus. That's sick. <laughs> you know, like like Travis Scott, or those kind of people are wearing right now. If when you check like the mainstream American pop music right now, they are wearing it. But that's like it's man type Nike. Even that picture was '89 or something, by the way. This is their apartment. Basically, you, you are seeing the wall drawings. It's just handmade. They were basically drawing these heavy metal heads, just expressing. You know, I mean, just just to live the life in a way, the way that they want. That was very important. And especially meeting with that feeling at a young age is so important because when you don't do, but this is a hilarious picture. This is just like a bunch of guys from the same apartment uh, from Merta, where I grew up with, by the way. You see the boombox and I remade them, it's classic. They are like 10 years old or something here, like 10 years old. It's like, they find out the punk and hardcore, especially American hardcore, through uh, trash metal. So that was important. This is a hilarious and amazing picture. They are proud because they are in front of their poster design. This is uh, the back side. You see the posters that they made for the per first punk hardcore fest in Ankara, where that take place. They went there without their family's permission. It's like me going to Washington DC, in a weekend to throw a punk concert, but my family doesn't know and I'm living in New York, right? <laughs> you know? And they were just want to take this picture because they were proud. This is like their proudness, this is like band promo picture, you know? This is amazing, this is an amazing picture because he's having a DRI cap, handmade by the way, it's just like a uh, like char chalk, uh, he made it, like he drew it. And that's Napon Dad t-shirt, which is like an extreme band, if, if you know what that is. Their songs only last for three seconds, but nothing like that, uh, you know? And this is a public bus, which we call EETT in Turkish. And he, this is our apartment again in Merta. The reason why I'm showing you all these things, you, I, I, I you can't even imagine, even my country, even right now, oh, even after this movie came out, there are people refusing to accept that these kind of things kids didn't exist in Turkey, it's like crazy. Like, that's why I'm showing these pictures constantly on, on, a, on a tour, because people are like, really, like, really, 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 you know? like, they're like trying to ask me this weird question all the time. Yeah, man, like, they did exist. I, I mean, like, what do you want me to say? Like, look at it. And I'll find out that these kind of micro, this is not even a micro organization, this is like, even smaller than a micro organization. These kind of little youths like existed in the South America too. That's what I find out. In Peru, like weird places, they did exist too. But I believe they were the first organized one in a Muslim country. Like before any 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 other Middle Eastern country ever. It's like you see. So it, it's so important, you know, uh, for this history to, 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 to go out and, and find its uh, meaning outside of its zone. 
because it's going to give inspiration to so many people. So this is not just about being uh, being a punk in Istanbul. It's about being yourself in any kind of places, you know, and just doing the things that you want to do in this life. And it's so important. It's so important. It's it's larger than punk. Like that's what that is. It's, it's not about music anymore. It's more about being yourself and being human in this world. And especially in in an automation age where augmented realities and all these new machines are taking over and now we are in the age of defining what it means to be human these pictures are standing so much because like truly like it's all about expressing yourself and finding your inner pace and inner yourself and and then creating a meaning outside of this world is so important especially in the techno age you know that's why i'm very excited to share and thank you for being here you know i mean it means a lot for me i mean in philadelphia right now yeah, this is from a picture, this is the scene. Some of the people here died, by the way. I mean, it's sad to see that. But this is like a newspaper. This is the newspaper uh, thing that came out from the concept that you got, I showed you the video, which is a very really rare video that not so many people had that. Yeah, if there's a, any question I'd like to answer, or, you know, yeah. Did you ever play in a band yourself? And if so, what did you play? Uh, yeah, I was playing bands. Uh, I was into post-punk a lot. I was into like Joy Division and New Order and those kind of stuff. So I used to have a band when I was in the high school. Uh, and I played bass guitar uh, for a while. But it was very weird. Like I was going to a private school and, and, and I was like literally grew up in the 2000. And even my band member's father wasn't wanted to hang out, uh, like telling his child uh, basically to not to hang out with us because we were making music and he was giving money to my man band member not to be with us go to this crap like this uh, exploited bars like gossip girl style people goes and they, they open champagne and they give him that money because we were making music like the cure I experienced this kind of stuff, and I was going to a private school. Yeah, I mean, like I'm, I'm coming from a privileged background, actually. Like I'm supposed to be more modern. You understand what I mean? Like I mean, it's like it's, it was a very really weird experience for me to know the fact that like you know, one of my band members' father was like forcing him to go to yeah, Joe, that's called clubs, you know. Don't hang out with them. Yeah. It seems like in the movie there is this kind of tension between wanting to stay in Istanbul and wanting to leave. Like, yeah. There were in, even other of his friends, like youth, you, like relatively progressive people were like, no, you should stay. Like people yeah. wanted to go. I was wondering if you could talk about that tension between wanting to stay and wanting to go and why you wanted to include it in the film and your opinion on that. All my life I had that. And not just me, my brothers had that too. This is a really weird virus that takes place in Istanbul. It's very really strange. That's why people are really focused, like, even like they are confused by seeing me traveling the whole world, just like, and, and, and showing these kind of stuff, because they think that like being West, Western means just leaving Istanbul. <laughs> like, I mean, for them, is the geography is meaning being Westernism. Like, I, I don't know if I'm like explaining clearly, there's this weird virus going on, which I don't get it. And then I see this confusion going on in my friends too. Like, it, 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 especially in the techno age, like geography lost its value now. Like, and they were just obsessed with leaving Istanbul. Like, if I stay here, I don't, it's not about your geography, it's about you that things are not like uh, going on. It's because of you that, uh, that you, you, you are not making what you want, what you should be doing. Or you are not fighting for it. Like, I'm coming here, I'm, I, I was in New York just like a, a one day ago, and I was just checking the background story. Like, in the 80s, New York was not a place to live. I mean, it wasn't. It was a very dirty place, but these people, these punk kids, they wanted to live and they wanted to exist and they make music there. It wasn't easy for them. It wasn't not like, oh, let's go to CBGB and like take beer and like, it wasn't like that. They had a fight for it. 
and then it becomes something. And this is, I'm not seeing that in my country most of the time. I'm just seeing people bullshitting about their cities all the time. But if I'm not saying that everything is perfect, oh, let's, you know, let's be a Pollyanna, and like, I mean, oh, wow, such an amazing city. No, but like, just please, God say, you know, let's give your energy back to the city and do something about something. And in a micro context too, you know. Um, that uh, the woman in the uh, in the record store at the beginning, she talks. I didn't quite catch the band's name, but she talks about that uh, this band being, uh, you know, a uh, Turkish riot girl or yeah. whatever. And then her band plays later in the thing. Can you talk about the representation of uh, yeah. women in the punk scene in Istanbul? That was so important because uh, there was one period of time for me uh, when I. After I figured out the punk, so I was into the Washington DC sound, I was listening to this like minor thread and all spaz, born against, like I was like into DRI, I was a Chicano uh, for, for a short period, like wearing like my shirt like the way they were, like uh, suicidal tendencies, obsessed, like I was all into all this stuff and then I find out wild girls and then it was like bitch in a kill, hug a bear, you know, like I was like what? Like, I hate the girl, I hate the man, like, like you know, like, just burn the man. Like, I love that spirit. And it was, for me, it was very weird, you know? And, and then I figured out that when I was, like, with my brothers, there was a very important band, actually, uh, an influential one, which is called Tampon. They are the first wild girl band. And actually, before that, there was a girl band, too, uh, which is called Spinners from Ankara. But they were, like, metalish punk kind of a way. So there were some couple of punk bands in Turkey. But I wanted to put it into this film in a way that, like, because these girl bands have never been portrayed in the Turkish cinema before. I wanted to show that they did exist. And, and it was very important for me uh, to show the fact that there were women bands too. Uh, and, 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 and that's why I make that special band. And also, uh, there's a character, uh, I think if you feel about this, that uh, Jan Morai, which is an amazing actress from Turkey, played it amazing, and the lyrics were like hilarious, like, no, I'm not your bitch. Uh, and, and, like, yeah, and that song is like just to show that like in Turkey that they that kind of people did exist. This is an amazing moment for you all because the basically the video cassette is finished and it comes up to <laughs> you see it's like a family thing comes up and then now it's the concert back again. So it was always these fun tapes and they were recording their concerts on top of those tapes. <laughs> yeah. Why did you decide? I mean, this is like an apples and oranges kind of question. Uh, to answer, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, I want to add one thing. And Selda Bajan is a very important musician. And she was uh, from the 60s making very progressive sound. And when you look at to her lyrics in behind it, there are some really interesting things about gender and identity and stuff. I just want to give these What's to you. Name? Selda Bajan, which is a very Barbara. famous. Yeah, yeah, she is very famous in the Seattle scene, too. Uh, and yeah. That was the whole thing about that. Yeah. I was wondering about making this movie as as a film, as a movie, as a storytelling movie, rather than making a documentary about the Turkish punk scene. And obviously those are two very yeah. separate things. And if you're a storyteller, you want to tell a story rather than make a documentary. Yeah. But you have all this footage, you have all this knowledge, and I don't know if there is a good documentary about the history of Turkish punk. There isn't. There's actually one documentary out there on YouTube, which I also did make. I did it. <laughs> yeah, I, the reason why I did it is that because even the Turks were doesn't believe in me. It was very strange. Like you don't understand. Like especially in repressed societies, when things are too underground, that even if you, underground is, means there's a city. Like, this is like, even before underground than that, people are so much, like, that, uh, rejecting everything. They, they, they believe that, like, no, no, they didn't exist. But I, that's why I, I made it. And, 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 but what I want to portray is that, like, I wanted to reach out as many people possible in my country through using the narrative, power of narrative film, and using the characters and everything. Because punk film and punk music and all these concepts are by itself, the minute you use the word in a sentence, 
it means it's enough for them to like run away from you, like you know, like so. Uh, right now, this was a really revolution in my country because I was in 80 theaters across the Turkey, even in my like my, in far east. I, I made my movie to be uh, uh, shown in the theaters. So uh, that was like that was a huge thing, you know, and I then I sold like ten thousand tickets, which is like it's unheard of for even a pump band to even sell a CD in the back old days. So uh, it was for me just to reach out to the people that they never be think these kind of people did exist and to show them uh, like you know guys, girls, these people did exist. I'm sorry, hear this, take it, inspire from it, and look at it from a different perspective, you know. Do you think you would have had as much success with a documentary versus a narrative film? The documentary will be a, a less a, a success for my country, but I would like to do those kind of stuff. Yeah, especially for uh, for uh, outside market. Yeah, I'm thinking about it too. So hopefully, yeah, we will make it. Is there any other question? Yeah. So like in the bedroom at the beginning, the yeah. beginning of his bedroom, all the flyers on the walls and stuff like, where did you guys get those? Because those look totally legit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that was the weird. Uh, most of the stuff that you saw, especially the music, they all been uh, smuggled, smuggled into Turkey through pilots. Like, com like commercial pilots. Uh, because back in the old days, in the 70s, it was beyond hard to go outside of Turkey. It was expensive. So it means that you have to have a flight ticket. So fl having a flight ticket in the 70s is a big deal. You know, it wasn't the visa, it was the ticket that was a big deal. So basically the pilots were once the one, like they were having a side project where they were importing like perfumes, sometimes records. So basically they were going to the record shop and buying what's new. And you know, it was the time period in the 80s that trash metal become a success and especially the metal. So they basically figured out these trash metal records by coincidence, and through that, uh, these my, my brothers were find out these bands and music. And then one, et cetera, et cetera, mail order. That was the crazy part. Uh, it's before internet, they figured out the social media. It was the punk culture. It's the first social media, true social media. If you think about it this way, the mail orders, uh, like the, the network was so diverse that like they actually released their first record, my brothers, from a band from Belgium. And, they, and, they, and, and the other second EP, split EP that they made, was a band called, from Mexico, a narco Mexico band called Regina Ignacio. And, and like it was an interesting time to experience that, you know, and especially when you were like 14 years old kid, you know. Yeah. Is there any question? Yeah, we can finish it. And maybe we can talk after here, you know, we can go somewhere too if it is yeah. Okay. yeah. So how big was the crew for shooting that film? Wow, it was intense for me. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, basically like I made this movie because my friends believed in me. But the older generation they didn't believe in me. It was always like that, oh, you are going to do this, you are going to... Uh, it's uh, always like stupid questions, you know? They don't get the energy. And, and like, you just look at me, I'm like burning like fire, you know? Like, I'm going to do this for me, you know? Like, even if you cut my hands, I'm going to do it. It's obvious, you know? Even now, now I am going to... You know, I can shoot this movie myself or right now in the streets of Philly, you know? Like, I had that much energy. Like, just get over this shit, you know? But they didn't believe it. And I was like, okay, man, I'm going to pull over a team which is going to be my friends, and most of them is young people. And I basically, what you look at to this point, when you watch it, you actually also experience the today's underground Turkey tour. All these people are from the, the faces of underground Istanbul. So I put together all these people because I was knowing all of them. And in 13 days, I shoot the movie with a black magic macro, which is like a, a $1,000 camera. Uh, yeah, I used handmade Russian lenses, which we borrowed from a guy who is a very nerd guy, which he was helpful, but basically we did it by a very punk way, so it's not just the context of the film, it's also the way it's being shot was really punk, you know? Yeah. I was wondering, if, is there a larger DIY or underground punk 
film scene in Istanbul that you're kind of working within, or like what is the? It's film happening project? right now. It's happening. People are seeing it. They are seeing it. Me. There are some young people. We are actually. I am one of the youngest one in the field that can make movies for the cinema. But I come from internet, you know? Like, that's why the internet was the beginning of the internet. I'm not speaking now, but the beginning of the internet was very punk. Still, the internet is punk. But, like, you know, it's just like platform based, uh, you know, like growth oriented uh, platforms now. But still, the power is in, the, is in there. So, I was into all these distribution models, making my own movie, putting it out there and stuff. So, there is a lot of new filmmakers I know they are like, getting inspiration from us. I am also getting inspired from them. So there is a, like a, something going on. And hopefully in the following years, when we get more and more power, we will like, literally challenge the stereotype, uh, stereotypes of Turkish cinema. Because there's a huge gap going on in Turkish cinema right now, where the serious movies are all village films, which I hate them. Like if you, if you look at closely, right, actually Turkish cinema is right now having a golden age. Like every major big film festival has a Turkish film accepted in, in nowadays. However, when you look into the context of the film, it's always really stories because uh, Orientalism feels uh, attention very easily. Uh, but that doesn't work anymore. It, the whole East is right now is buildings. It's that there's no village anymore in the East. Like if, if you are talking about a problem right now in the East, it's actually that there is no village anymore. Like I mean, but they're just like feeding it, you know. I mean, but it's changing. We are telling the city life stories and underground role. There's a huge tension going on. There's a lot of problems going on in the city life, and the whole Turkey is basically actually a city. So it's, we are talking about all this stuff, you know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Yeah.